the flying geese quilt has been popular for years because it can be made easily from a scrap bag. Now this one is particularly colorful with its turkey red, indigo blues, and then it has bright plaids. Well, the pattern represents flight or migration. During the time of the Underground Railroad, the quilt was used as a reminder for slaves to head north particularly in the spring as the geese. Well, geese would have to stop at waterways along their journey in order to rest and eat. Runaway slaves should copy the behavior of the migrating geese. Well, today I wanna to show you how to make your own flying geese quilt. Now you can make it out of your scrap bag or carefully planned from new fabric. You can always tell where the geese are by the commotion and the noise. Well, I expect to hear a lot of honking over this pattern. Join me. The flying geese is just a great scrap quilt. But since I do not have one single scrap in this log home, I'm doing a planned quilt today. Now I want to make a lap robe. I need to have 48 geese. Oh, that's going to be fast and easy. Now start with the lattice. Now this particular lattice is a stripe. And whenever you cut it, I can get a perfect three inch strip. And each one of your pieces are going to depend on the actual width of your stripe. And then from this striped lattice, I selected all six of my geese fabrics, and they are perfect. 1855-1870 reproduction pieces. This is an indigo blue, and then I love this one, double pink or cinnamon pink. How about a copper? based matter, perfect, and chrome yellow. It's so bright, just with a touch of red and a little black. This is over dyed green. Check is pretty true for the, the time period. And then I had to have this large scale red, just as my zinger or my little zip. Now to do a lap robe, you need to have one third yard piece of each one of the six and a yard and a half will do you for the lattice. Now my background actually reads solid from a distance. It's just a real small scale print, but it has blues and reds in it. You need to have one and a half yards for your lap rope. Now they are cut at 11 inches square. So I took and folded them from salvage to salvage. Here's the fold right here. Then I just brought the salvage up to the fold. I'm using a 12 and a half inch square up ruler, line up that 11 inch line right along the cut edge and just cut an 11 inch strip. Now today, to do a lap robe with the 48 geese, I need to have 12 11 inch squares. So I'm just going to take my ruler right over here in the salvage edge, put it straight, cut off that salvage, get rid of it, and through the double thickness, let me just flatten out that fold right in there in the middle. Through the double thickness, I'm going to cut two layered together and then just take this one piece on the fold, open it up, and cut one single layer. Oh my gosh, you'll just get this done so quickly. Line that up perfectly. And what's left right here, too small for an 11 inch square, I'll just get rid of it. Now just take these, set those aside. That's the background or the sky. Now the geese come from smaller squares. They are only nine and a half inches square. And oh my gosh, I look like I'm gonna be lucky with this piece. So just take your square up ruler. I am just gonna miss that torn edge. It's all been put on the straight of the grain with the torn edge, cut up, cross the top, take these two pieces, get rid of them, and just turn this corner and cut these into perfect nine and a half inch squares. From each one of the one third yard pieces, I need to have two nine and a half inch squares. Get rid of that. Now, you can have a dark or a medium geese and then the sky or the background, or you could also have a light geese and then a dark background. This is how you tell. Do this check. Take your larger square and it's the 11 inch one. Fold the larger square in half and then take the smaller square, which is the nine and a half, 
fold it on the diagonal and just place it in there so you'll know that when you're done doing all of your sewing this is what this particular one will look like now if you want to get a light geese let's just do the same thing the background square is cut at 11 inches the larger square take the smaller square nine and a half fold it in half put it in there and you can see just with those two different sizes of geese what the pattern's going to look like. So let me get all of my squares cut and I'll show you how to sew them. I am flying now. My squares are cut and I'm ready for sewing. So just take that 11 inch background square. This is the sky square. That should be blue, huh? And take a nine and a half inch V square and just place it right sides together to it. And you center the smaller one on top of the larger one, right sides together, and just tweak it, get it centered as best as you can. And when you think it's centered, then just take your 6 by 24 inch ruler with the 45 degree line, line it up with that left edge, check and see if the ruler actually goes through all four corners. Then you know it's perfectly centered. Take a permanent marking pen, and just line it up on the small ruler and mark corner to corner. Now that is a line that I can see. Boy, the older I get, the darker my lines have to be. Then take some straight pins and just put them on each hat just to kind of hold them together. The seam is one quarter inch. Ugh, got to have that quarter inch. And the foot on this machine is just great because from the needle, over to this black bar, it's a perfect quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to drop that black bar right on that line, hold those threads 15 stitches to the inch, and I'm just going to follow right down one side of it, just sewing right along there. You know, I, I just love the way the geese fly in that V formation. I know I walked out of my mom's house one day flying overhead. They were doing a great job. And just at the end, just turn it around, drop it down one more time so that by the time I'm sewing on the second side of the line, the distance in between should be a half of an inch. That would work really great, wouldn't it? Well, have you ever wondered why geese fly in that V formation? Oh, well, you know, scientists have found out that as each bird flaps its wings, it creates an uplift for the bird that's immediately following it. And then by flying together, the flock has at least a 71% greater flying range than if each bird flew on its own. That's a pretty good story, isn't it? Okay, there's my quarter of an inch right there. You can see from each side, half inch in between. Just going to pull out those pins. And all you want to do now is just place it on your pressing mat and set that seam. You know, it would be a good lesson for the runaways also, wouldn't it? You know how Harriet Tubman led all the passengers together, conducted them? Well, they actually found out that if they had a common direction, that they would get there a lot quicker and a lot more, more uh, easily if they did it together. Okay, so now I'm going to take the ruler, place it back on that diagonal line, and just cut it right in half. And so now... Got to. I'm just going to take these and place them with the large triangle on the top. And now this is important. Usually in quilting, we put the darkest color on the top. This time, it's size that's important. The large triangle is on the top. I'm going to set the seam and then just lift it and press right into it so that the seam is now behind the large triangle. Let me just take this one to set the seam. And this is best because whenever you start squaring it up, you want that seam to be definitely behind that large triangle. Make sure that you don't have any tucks or any folds. You can turn it over on the opposite side and check. Now, these two pieces go right sides together, but you place the geese on the sky. You place opposite colors together. You line up that seam th so that it goes um, parallel with each other right down through the center. Now, they will not match up on that seam. In fact, they're not even supposed to. This is the best part. They're not going to match right here, but they should line up on the outside edges. Then take 
again that 45 degree line, line it up with the outside edge, grab the permanent marking pen and just mark. And I like to start in the center, mark out, and then go back to the center and mark again. And now let's see if we can just put some pins in there. Hold this seam flat. This is the tricky part. You don't want that seam to just flip over whenever you're uh, stitching. Once again, drop that bar so that you're stitching one fourth inch away. And right as you go into this seam, there's one underneath. You want to hold, hold your, your fingers right on either side so that doesn't flip underneath. And at this one, you can use your stiletto so that you hold that flat when you get down to the bottom. Then one more time, just turn that around and stitch on the opposite side. You know, Harriet Tubman was leading a group of fugitives along and boy, one of them decided he wasn't going to go along with the rest. He was, was, got scared, he wanted to turn back and she, she just said, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? So she pulled out a gun and she said, move or die. So he moved and they got there together. So there's the second seam, a quarter inch from the line and then a half inch in between. And believe it or not, I am finished with all of the sewing on the geese. So now just line up your ruler one more time and cut it on that diagonal line. And when you take it apart, and when you open it up, you actually want those seams to lay flat away from the geese. Here's the geese right here. You want the seams to lay flat on this half and then turn it around on this half. Well, if you notice, right in between there's that twisted seam. So I'm just going to take my scissors and just take a little nip right up to that seam and then those seams will lay flat. Let me show you one more time. On this one, that's right in the middle, right in between the two of them, just take your scissors, take that little clip right up to the stitching. Now, I like to press them first from the right side. Just place them on your pressing mat, right side up, and just hold them so that you can take your iron and go right into that seam. Gosh, right at this point, you do, no, do not want any little folds or any little tucks right in there. So turn it around on the second half, press right in on the right side, just flip it over, and just do a good check, good press from the back side. Let me do the same thing with this second one right here. This is so amazing. Right now, it just doesn't look like anything. In fact, one of the ladies looked at this and she said, looked at that seam and she said, oh my gosh, I have been off before, but never this much. Well, it doesn't look like much like this, but what if you just go ahead and cut it in half and then you'll see you have a geese on each side. Now it's time to just square it up I'm going to start out first with a 6 by 12 ruler. Now so your ruler doesn't slip on you when you're placing it on there, you can take these little sandpaper dots and on the underneath side, just go ahead and stick a couple of those dots scattered throughout your ruler. And you want to make sure you don't cover up your lines. Well you take the 45 degree line, just kind of line it up on the geese seam right along there. Let me slide it along to this one right here. Second point to watch is right at the tip of the geese. You want to have your quarter inch line right up at the top. And with my 6 by, tw by 12, just going to cut it in half into two. Take the second one, one more time, line up the 45 degree line along that edge. Put the quarter inch line right up here and you actually just trim out this little sliver section in the middle. I always like to make things oversized so much easier to trim them up to smaller. Okay, now we're going to switch out rulers. I'm going to take the 12 and a half inch square up ruler. These are to be four by eight or four and a half by eight. They finish at four by eight. But right now, so we allow for the seam allowance, you want to have it at four and a half and eight and a half. And right here at the tip, I'm going to put the uh, mark at four and a quarter. Okay, just shift that over a little bit and hold that ruler down. Trim on one side, turn the patch, but not the ruler. And now put eight and a half here, four and a half here. 
diagonal line going right down along that seam, trim up the side and across. Now let's check it out, see if we have some good looking geese. Here we have that quarter inch seam right up there. The stitches, the seams go right out into the corners. Looks good, wasn't too bad. Let me go ahead and get rid of some of these pieces, but let's see if we can make it a little easier. Because I have this ruler that's just made for squaring up flying geese, you can see, let me get this second piece right underneath it. You can see that the lines on it, those turquoise lines, are going to make it. See, it says four by eight finish geese. So to make it even easier, I'm going to take a little mat and turn it so that I have the wrong side up. I actually don't like to see the other lines disturbing it underneath. So I'm just going to place the ruler right on the stitching lines. Get it all lined up, have those sandpaper dots on there. Make some room on the table and you just cut right across the center, split it in half, down the side, got two sides, don't even lift or move the ruler just turn the mat and trim on two more sides. And there, once again, I have some perfect geese. Let me just do that one more time. Gosh, I get into this. This is just so much fun. I love to do it. You can sit and trim out all four of those so quickly. Down the side, turn the mat. Don't even lift that ruler. Keep those seams all lined up and right across here. Fantastic. You know, did you know that when the lead goose gets tired, it just rotates to the back and another goose flies the point? And this is our lesson. It pays to take turns doing the hard job. Well, I'm going for the geese ruler. My geese are done and they're headed north. I laid them out in the color arrangement that I want and I divided them into pairs. So there's actually three different pairs here. Now you take the first pair, flip it right sides together, the second pair right sides together, and then the third pair. And so that you can assembly line so you just make one stack out of each one of them. Now, the, the critical part is stitching right across here so that you have a nice crisp point on the outside edge. And you know, it actually does help if you have a contrasting thread so that you can see it whenever you uh, stitch across it. Line up the outside edges with your stiletto, then take your stiletto and hold that seam flat so that it doesn't twist when you stitch across it. Oh, that looks good. And you just continuously assembly line sew those pairs one after the other. And let's take a look at one of them. See right here you can see that the stitching crosses right at that point and from the right side, if I'm lucky, it's going to be a nice crisp point. Looks good. Okay, then clip these assembly line sewn pairs together, sew them together into groups of six, and then for a lap robe, sew two groups of six for 12 geese in one row. And then from the wrong side, you want to take and press flat from the base of the geese towards the point. For a lap robe, you need to make four of these. Now the lattice is, is next, and the width of this lattice is actually one and a half inches right here. In between from this stripe to this, it's one and a half inches. I want to have a total of approximately three. So at one and a half inches, half of that would be three-fourths. So I'm going to take the three-fourths inch line on the ruler, let's see if I can line it up, and just drop it right on that dark stripe, and then just cut right up through the middle. And the great part about this is that there's no waste for each one of these lattice. Well, let me get these cut out, and I'll show you how it looks together with the rows. I have all four rows sewn together, and they were all identical to this one at one time. But I wanted to create this diagonal row of geese going right through the quilt. So this is how you do it. I see the greens going down stair step along there. So I'm just going to take this green right here, 
put it one row lower and then over here on the opposite end I need to remove these three geese and sew it to the top. Oh, I am the best unsewer in the West. I use my rotary cutter and I'm just holding it with my thumb and first finger and my fingers are in the back holding that fabric. My other hand is just pulling with the fabric and you just drop your blade against the stitches and then just reposition. Just really just cutting those blades. Oh, it'll be safe because my fingers are out of the way, you can see. And then just cut the blade. Let's see if I have that pattern going right. Okay, and this one right up here. Lattice comes next and all you need to do is just flip the lattice right sides together to the geese and then you sew from the base of the geese to the top of the geese so that you're actually not fighting those seams as you sew. Once you sew all the lattice on, then just set the, the lattice on top, open and press it so that the seam is behind the lattice. Well, adding the lattice is the easy part. It's getting these rows of geese going straight across each other. So I like to just take this row and I'm just going to fold it right sides together to it. And let's see if I can kind of fold it back so I can see what's going on. And then I line up these seams along here, assuming that they're going to be straight on this lattice edge. And then just take your pins, pin them right through so that you have everything in order. Once again, you can turn it and then just sew from the base to the top with those seams going down. You won't have to fight them. Well, make sure you get lattice in between each one of the rows and on the outside edges. And then to finish it off, all you need to do is square off these ends along here and add lattice on each end. Your top will be finished. Friday night, Teresa and five girls arrived for goose making. We started right in centering and marking our squares. Well, Melissa was making her first quilt. PJs are great to work in and then it was off to bed. Mike fixed us a hearty breakfast and we started the day honking. The girls squared the blocks, picking up a few tricks from me, and then it was off to their sewing machines. Melissa and Megan and Leanne. Mary did great and Amber's already a pro. Remove those pins and add that lattice. Pin those rows together and square off the corners. It's time for batting and some backing and machine quilting. Team pinning worked great for us. And then add those last stitches. The girls had a great time and will remember it forever. Flying geese quilts come in all sizes and in all themes. Now I did this one for a baby, just four fabrics in it. I selected some polka dots and some checks. It's so cute. And then I just did a stitch in the ditch right around the geese and an easy stitch in the ditch right down through the lattice. Probably the easiest quilting that you could do. Now this is my sister Patty's in all of the Amish colors, beautiful in purples and turquoise. And then she used black for the background or the sky. Now her lattice comes from one piece of fabric. She fussy cut it and then she used the remaining stripe in between each of the lattice pieces for the border. Oh, it is fantastic with that medallion print. Just love this one. Now Lori Forsyth did a monochromatic quilt, all in the bright orange colors, and her lattice is just an overall print that she used. You know, she made this for her sister Sherry for a Christmas gift. What a great sister, and what a great quilt. Now Amber Varnes made this one in reproduction fabrics, 1930s fabrics. Amber is only 11 years old. She said this is the easiest quilt that she ever made. And then my cousin Carol Ann did quarter inch inside each one of the geese machine quilting and stippled throughout all of the background fabric. Now Amber had a few geese left 
and she turned it into this charming pillow cover. It's just such a great pillowcase. Love it. Now, Sue Bouchard did this queen-size quilt in all of the bright reds, blues, purples, greens. It's fantastic to fit on a king-size bed. And then our friend Sandy Thompson did the quilting. She did loop-to-loop, -loop, stippling throughout, and then a pretty cable right through the border. Just beautiful. Well, when a goose gets sick or is wounded or falls out, two geese accompany it to help and protect it. So if we had the sense of a goose, we would stick together.